Welcome, this is what is happening on the sun today, the 10th of August 2011. In 1675, the cornerstone for this famous observatory was first laid. It was originally called Flamsteed House. So today's trivia question is, what is it known as today? The answer will be given at the end. Also at the end, there are images of the comet Elmin taken by the Stereo B spacecraft, which I think you'll enjoy. But before we get into all of that stuff, let's take a look at what's been going on on the sun. Since the X-flare yesterday, we've had six medium-level C flares, all from region 1263. Also, the X-ray background seems to be dropping a little bit, and that is because region 1263 is going over the northwest limb, and, and is now partially hidden from our view. Looking at the sunspot regions, we can see why things have quieted down a bit. Region 1263, the one that's been producing most of the activity, is right on the northwest limb, and will be gone by tomorrow. Region 1266 is stable, but not producing very much activity. The region in the southern hemisphere, region 1267, was only a few small spots yesterday, and I was unable to find any significant spots there today, so I think that's gone, at least for the time being. We do have a small region following region 1266 that is as yet unnumbered. It may be the remnants of region 1268, coming back, but we'll see shortly if it's a new region or a return of an old region. There is a single small spot on the northeast limb that again is not in a numbered region as yet. We're going to have to wait for a day or two to see how useful that region is going to be as far as producing activity. My suspicion is not. In the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, I'd like you to look at the general decay of the sunspot regions, particularly in the magnetic movie where you can see the regions are very diffuse and spread out which indicates weak field and a low potential for flares. In the Helium-2304 movie which corresponds to about 50,000 degrees, in other words the transition region, I'd like you to concentrate on the northern polar region where there seems to be a very nice eruption going on. Unfortunately Helio viewer is not working today so I can't get a nice movie of it. In the low temperature coronal movie keep an eye on region 1263 off the northwest limb it is giving a beautiful display of dynamic loops. The Lasko coronagraph data on the SOHO spacecraft shows just how much activity there has been in terms of coronal mass ejections. Look off the western limb and just see the continual flow of coronal mass ejections. It's hard to keep count of how many there are, all from the region 1263 no doubt. According to the ACE data there has not been very much change in any of the major parameters of the solar wind, the speed, the density or the temperature and that's because we're under the influence of a high-speed solar wind stream from a small coronal hole. The high-energy electron flux has remained high for the last 24 hours and you can see that we're still under the influence of the proton event from the X-flare. Now the observant ones amongst you probably notice a lot of flickering on the uh, coronagraph images from SOHO. Those are the same protons that we're measuring here. The image from the NOAA 15 satellite shows a moderate level of activity in the auroral zone, but the KP index has been varying between only 1 and 3, so it is relatively quiet. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B3 level, the sunspot number has fallen to 54, the radio sun intensity is 102 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is backed off a little to 540 km per second with a density of less than 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that there's a good chance of getting C flare, M and X flares are becoming increasingly unlikely, the sunspot number will remain low, we have a good chance of getting coronal mass ejections, the solar wind speed should go lower, and the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is poor. In the slightly longer term we can see that there are two regions behind the east limb about three or four days away from becoming visible to us. But until then, we're going to have to rely on our existing regions developing or new regions appearing to get any more activity. If you'd like to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see some of the earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel. They're all listed there, along with some other videos that you might find interesting. The answer to the trivia question is the Royal Observatory at Greenwich. Here is the picture taken by the Stereo B spacecraft of the comet Elnin. As we pan in, you can see that it's got a bright uh, coma around it and a small tail beginning to form as it gets closer to the sun. This is a, taken at a distance of only 7 million kilometers, which is very close in astronomical terms, 
and you can see how small the comet is with respect to the field of view. They must have taken a very deep exposure to get so many background stars to show up. So I'm having difficulty recognizing the constellations here. If anybody has any luck doing that, let me know. Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.